this was between both men. Trevor Murdoch retaining the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. A big moment for Trevor Murdoch, retaining that championship, but also standing up for himself, right. standing up for his son, his standing family. up for his family, standing up for the NWA Wait a minute. family. Who's this now? Matt, is this what? Matt Cardona? What is Matt Cardona doing here? Matt Cardona is What's in the NWA. What's Matt Cardona doing here? Matt Cardona is oh, no. here in the NWA? Oh, he's oh, ruining this beautiful moment. What? what? Oh, oh, come what on. What's happening? What is going on here? What is Matt Cardona doing here in the NWA? He, is here's he what he just said, said though. No, no, no. Here's what he just said. I came out to congratulate you. He's asking Trevor, are you okay, man? I don't know if I trust Matt Cardona. I don't know. Murdoch. I don't think. After he's that grueling man, he's, he's trying to get to his you feet. Go. I don't think Trevor Murdoch can trust anybody at this point. Uh, uh, oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh. Come on, guys. Enough is enough already. Matt Cardona's got his eye on that championship belt now. Oh, this is such disrespect to Trevor Murdoch. That's the oh, motivation. This is That's the what Cardona wants. That's the moment. Cardona wants to be the next NWA World Heavyweight Champion. What is up, you beautiful people? This is Gary Horton. This is this is the NWA, the show celebrating the past, present, future history, legacy, and tradition of the greatest pro wrestling entity of all time. Of course, that's the National Wrestling Alliance. And I am joined by my life partners, my business pals, and my roommates for the past several days. And we're all tired and uh, always late, but worth the wait. Still in phrases from Polio Del Mar all day long um, and everything else. I'll have a makeup tutorial to come and all of that. But yeah. anyway, that's Will Martin, Dr. Stinson. Hello, fellas. Hello. Good to see you. We, all, we all have been up. And uh, after a grind this past weekend from the NWA tapings, new show NWA USA, Hard Times 2 on Saturday, and then two straight days of NWA power tapings. It was a blast, though. I would not rather do anything else. It was fun hanging out for the National Wrestling Alliance and being able to capture a lot of cool stuff and, and be a part of that environment. Anyway, uh, that's the big thing you just saw right there. One of the huge announcements is Matt Cardona is in well maybe in the NWA he showed up on the NWA Matt Cardona was there at hard times too and looking pretty suspicious what do you say suspicious I mean uh, he's <clears throat> you know we know he's a huge wrestling fan and uh um you know wrestlers run in pretty small circles so it seems to me Wanted to come out and offer uh, Trevor Murdoch a well-deserved congratulations on a hard-fought victory over Mike Knox. And, uh, you know, very surprised and pleased to see him here. So you don't think there was any, like, connection to Mike Knox at all? Like, I mean, he kind of stepped out of the way when Mike Knox, like, booted Trevor in the face there. No, not... I mean, he's, look, man, you don't know if he's filled out his, you know, W-9s and all of his waivers and all that stuff. He's He obviously wasn't there to, to get involved in anything and – uh, you know, we don't want to bring legalities into this and all that, but uh, you, you see the man, I mean, he obviously has a great deal of respect for the 10 pounds of gold. He handed it back to uh, Trevor when he was down. And uh, I, I don't know. I think we might be jumping to conclusions here. All right. Well, I guess we'll get into it. And of course we're going to get into it with the chat. All of you guys there. I see you all in there. Uh, fees here tonight. Uh, Neil Benedict saw him this weekend. Uh, saw Polka Dot, Pam, Trenda, Front Rows there, Sean, a, a lot of you, Doty, God, Eric, all of you. It's so good to see everybody. Thank you so much for being here and in the chat. And if you're watching and not engaging in the chat, we're also to have you just watching. Thanks for being a part of the NWA Power Post Show. We're happy to be back at the, at the start of Season 7 of NWA Power. And what a way to start. So uh, lots of stuff to get into. Uh, but the big one, Trevor Murdoch, still your world's heavyweight champion. Uh, if you miss Hard Times 2, that's an excellent show. I don't I don't think it gets any more stacked than that show was. And excitement was palpable in the room. 
unfortunately the fans had to be turned away due to some issues there at GPB that, uh, you know, unfortunately things didn't go how we like to with uh, having as many people in the room. But I think uh, judging by this episode, if you looked right there, they made it work because that setup, I love the new setup. Did you guys, I, I don't know. It just looks so much better to, than I even thought it could uh, yeah. watching it tonight. <laughs> yeah, it looked great. And I mean, you know, this is not news to to the three of us or probably most of you guys in the chat, but the hashtag NWA fam always shows up and they show up loud and they show up excited. And uh, that that's what really made the past few days just on another level. I mean, despite limitations and, and health and safety precautions and all that kind of stuff, uh, man, it was still just a, an energetic, you know, four days of, of pro wrestling. And that's, you know, you can't ask for a better crowd. No, uh, everybody was remarking about that uh, from, and I'm talking about from, from you know, the ring crew all the way to the very top of the company. I'm talking about the president himself. They were all remarking on how this particular contingent of fans always brings in and how they they showed out in full force and made it a, a great environment for, for themselves, for the talent uh, that were working. And uh, it, it came across well on TV, I think, and, uh, the NWA fam is the best, man. They always do it. Big shout out to the Nation Show group showing up with about about ninety to hundred people. You know, they hold the whole Nation Show was there basically. Nobody and, else uh, and, could watch the shows because the Nation's <laughs> corner was there. The nation, yeah, the na Nation's there. corner. Yes, the Nation's, Nation's corner. corner. Yeah, yep. Nation's right, corner. Right. And uh, uh, shout out and, uh, Noni McPony. She was there from yep. Noni was all the way wherever she's from. And uh, thanks for pointing out that uh, the title bar says uh, season one, episode seven. Uh, it's actually season seven, episode one. But thanks for uh, calling me out on that. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, don't shake your head at me, Rob. You overlook right. a lot of things here lately. It's been a long <laughs> weekend. A lot of things here lately. It's been a long it's been weekend. A, it has been a long weekend. <laughs> um, and if you wonder if any, it, not much has changed. I don't know if you saw the we we got the the promo with Tom Latimer ahead of time. Tried to talk to him going into this match, but uh, on social media, you got to see it there. Uh, he's still telling me to piss off. I think we'll make that an audio clip just to play randomly now. Uh, and, can, I, uh, can I control it? Yeah, just to randomly say piss off, Gary. Uh, anyway, all right. Well, uh, let's dive into this show. Let's run through it. I want to get the, the chat's thoughts. Thanks for being here. And of course, and by the way, just for your Christmas shopping needs, if you haven't already, make sure you head over to prowrestlingtees.com slash NWA where you can get all kinds of cool stuff like this killer Camille shirt. The Burke is Brick House. Make sure you check that thing out. And uh, over at Collard Elbow, we got stuff too. Look at Trevor Murdoch. Got his Everybody's a Tough Guy Until They Meet One shirt. I have one, and I wore it in the same room while he was also wearing the same shirt, and I felt really special. Yeah, I, was I like, kept getting y'all confused. Call, it's, it's what you call marking mm -hmm. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, Trevor, we're twinsies. Yeah, and he, he, he was didn't not having it. Acknowledge you. Yeah. No sold. Just like Rob's no Corgan conspiracy yeah. shirt that he wore around. <laughs> Mr. William Patrick Corgan had no time for Doc Stinson. And who could blame him, what, honestly? Which is exact, that's exactly it. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, all right. So we'll work on a uh, good, good idea, Roy. Did we'll, we'll get a piss off Gary shirt eventually. Yep. Working on it now. <laughs> all right so let's uh dive into the show we started off i mean there, there's a lot of news to talk about obviously after hard times Two, another big thing junior heavyweight title uh tournament going on out of hard times Two, uh new show announcement well i guess we'll, we'll get to all of it there's just so much to cover but uh we opened here on what you just saw the matt cardona incident and then we dive right into a big matchup and I, I it didn't hit me until as i was watching it this matchup is huge for a lot of reasons but one of those reasons is like Everybody in this, uh, aside from Colby Carino, who's usually the young new guy, everybody else were the young new guys, you know, or basically like the, the the brand new faces on NWA Power, especially in the studio setting. So you had the fixers teaming up with Colby Carino, taking on OGK with the savage gentleman, Victor Benjamin. And uh, guys, that match was just fire. I Oof. loved every second of that matchup. Yeah, OGK, man, I, you know. Those guys, I'm so excited ever since by any means necessary when they showed up out there in Oak Grove, Kentucky. That was such a shock, and I'm I'm so glad that they uh, are sticking around, it looks like. Yeah, they defended the, the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships at uh, Hard Times 2, 
And then they start off this brand new season of power in the six man tag match with Victor Benjamin. And man, I mean, you know, the, the the same buzzwords we we keep using fast paced energetic i mean but it was interesting to me um and not a true tag team match but you did have two true tag teams involved in this match you had the fixers uh who work well together and have a you know completely uh, just kind of monster style uh big guys and then you've got ogk who are just incredible professional wrestlers and that 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 the the parallel and the differences there made this such an intriguing matchup for me and just seeing those guys uh go at it you know and we saw them at by any means necessary square off so getting to kind of revisit that and see them but with uh colby and victor in the mix man this was this was a great way to start off this season yeah i mean <clears throat> we, we talk about this all the time the tag team division in the nwa is freaking crazy it is it is insane we almost can't stand another tag team. It's too hot. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I can't stand another tag team joining this. I'm gonna lose my mind if I if I see another tag team. <laughs> well, well, just you just you wait. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I th- <laughs> thought that happened long ago, but good to know what will uh, finally trip the switch there for uh, Doc. Sensen. No, I'm just one saying, more tag team. I, I'm I'm just saying in this very episode we had a formation of a new tag team. So that's a great point. Will we'll that's get there point for will. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was a big fan. A lot of people talking about uh, that. Uh, the uh, savage gentleman, Victor Benjamin, a lot of people talking about him in the chat and uh, my God. Yeah. That guy is pretty incredible. Uh, an MMA fighter. I think he said an undefeated MMA fighter, but uh, he uh, just the strikes he had and just, the power like you just wouldn't expect it was just a pretty pretty impressive uh debut on nwa power for him that was uh fantastic so uh excited to see more of him and i'm sure we will i got a comment there on on the conclusion of that match uh, um because you have obviously the ogk in there and from what we saw by any means necessary i think many of us were expecting matt taven perhaps or mike bennett to steal the show but this was the colby carino show man this was the Colby Carino show, and that finisher was as crisp as it comes. And there his, he stands in the it, looking in the face of Taven uh, without a care in the world, without a fear in the world. This is a kid who's hungry, and he can do it all. He can do tag team wrestling. He can do singles wrestling. He can do six-man tag team wrestling. The sky's the limit for Colby Carino. Absolutely. Absolutely. That sunsetter was the name of that finisher. And, yeah, just a, a fantastic uh ending to the match there and just and the look i just i i felt the whole ending there when colby hits that move gets the pinfall win and matt taven sliding under the ropes like right at that moment and colby with the just evil grin that he had on his face too little too late baby too little too late the w and matt just like slamming his fist out on the mat and it was just uh love to see those two go one-on-one eventually so um Anyway, let's move on from that one and talk about, uh, we had a uh, promo, I think, right after that one, and we've got it here, so we'll just show that to you. Strictly Business still riding high in the NWA, even after a tough loss for Tom Latimer at Hard Times, too. Please welcome Strictly Business. Guys, I want to congratulate you on your matches at Hard Times, too. Chris and Camille were both victorious, but Tom, you didn't really have the same luck. How do you feel about it? Some of mine call it that may some might say that but i mean if you actually replay the tape it's nick that's walking out holding on to the ref it's nick that can't catch his breath it's nick that's wincing in agony and pain technically yeah uh, yeah he won but i took a piece of his soul and i'm in his head now may camille how do you feel about your match how do I feel? Well, what'd you expect, May? What'd you expect the outcome to be? What did you all expect? I mean, even though Melina, she she took tactics that were just uh, unlike anything I've ever seen. She bit my ear. Despicable. She bit my ear, May. And guess what? I still won. I'm still the women's champ. How about you, Chris? Uh, well, I told everybody that Chris Adonis was not afraid of the boogeyman. And I went into hard times, the national champion. And I walked out the national champion officially without any debate, finally making me 
the most defending NWA national champion of all time and the greatest NWA national champion of all time. And Tom, you ain't kidding. You're going to get yours, brother. Don't you even worry. Yeah, so uh, big, big uh, words from Strictly Business there. Uh, Chris Adonis obviously had a big win over Jadias at the pay-per-view, retaining that national title. We've got a, we got a brand-new show, NWA USA, coming up, which apparently will feature a lot of that national title. And uh, so uh, NWA, uh, William Patrick Corgan, whoever you want to say it, is apparently deciding uh, Chris Adonis is deserving of a little more spotlight and that title specifically and the junior heavyweight title. Uh, Camille... Always ride to high. Never seen Camille. Uh, God, I mean, have we even seen her face like much adversity at all? It just seems like she's dominant in dominant fashion always and is supremely confident. And then, of course, Tom Latimer, even in the loss, does make a, a point, Doc. It was Nick Aldis that rolled out of that ring, holding on to the referee and out of breath and uh, just uh, not not looking too hot. No, not at all. Uh, looking pretty sad, in fact. Uh, a shell, as it were, of his former self. Um, and uh, basically, I chalked this up as a, as a hat trick for Strictly Business at Hard Times too. Will, would you agree it's a hat trick? You like that reference there? Uh, I, you like that reference I, to a football there? Uh, yeah, I'm, t- I'm taking it back. <laughs> you're, you're, you're speaking my love language. Uh, you know, not necessarily a hat trick. I, I would... I would say that the uh, the the win loss record is pretty clear. It was two wins and one loss for Strictly Business, uh, and I'm not I'm not downplaying what what Tom Tandy said. There. I'm not downplaying what Tom said either. I mean he's he's right. He, he took Nick to the limit, and that was man that was the very definition of a grudge match, if you ask me. I mean two guys that I mean you could feel it, you know, coming through the the monitor if you were watching it on TV or, or it, obviously in the room you could feel it, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, strictly business, I, you, you got to say and you got to give it to them. You know, they went in there with two titles in, in their in their group there and they came out with two titles. So it's a successful endeavor for the business. Um, you know, two out of three in baseball, I get you in the Hall of Fame. So, you know, mm-hmm, can't mm-hmm. complain. I, I think, too, in grudge matches or in any other circumstance where titles are not on the line, what's on the line but souls? And if Tom walks out with the soul of Nick Aldis, then to me, that's a win. At least a moral victory. Soul. A soul versus soul match. It's interesting to see where that's going to play out because, I mean, uh, Tom's saying all of that, but Nick Alda seems to be in a on a whole different plane at this point. We'll find out more about that as we go on here. But he seems to be moving along in uh, mm. his trajectory, and it doesn't involve Tom Latimer. He seems to think that that's uh, all settled. But uh, we can talk about that in just a second. The next thing that happens is Jax Dane walks out and uh, he, he basically just talks to Kyle. Jax is upset, obviously, blaming Anthony Mayweather, uh, no longer going as Crimson specifically, uh, Anthony Mayweather, um, for blaming him for the loss to Mims, uh, saying that he was a distraction. And uh, anyway, Long story short, Jax Dane wants another crack at Mims and is willing to put his championship title shot uh, from the champion series on the line to get that rematch versus Mims uh, to prove that he can defeat Mims. And uh, he basically, I think, also in there says that William Patrick Corgan is afraid of him cementing his legacy and building his his reign, that sort of thing. So, uh, Will, I mean, Jack's, Jack's with a lot of big words in it, and it looks like he got it. He's going to have a match with Mims later on in the show. Yeah, I mean, you know, I see where he's coming from. I mean, it, you know, he's he's got a lot going on, and, and even though they went into the steel cage at by any means necessary, you know, that's not, that's not a, a grudge or a feud that just you move on from. I mean, those guys rode together for a long time and, and tag team all over the world, and so, you know, I, I understand, you know, Crimson or Anthony Mayweather, as he's known now, is is probably still in his head a little bit. And his presence at ringside was certainly distracting. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty bold move to put your your title shot up. I mean, that's, um, you know, they said it best on commentary. I don't know if it's if it's uh, confidence or, or cockiness could be a little bit of both. But uh, obviously he's got he's got a point to prove and uh, he's he's going to go try to do that later in the night. You think you think Jack Stain has a point to prove is what you're saying? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what he's he, he came out. He's a former the- NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. He's a former NWA National Champion, North American Champion, or whatever. He's 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 held virtually every major championship to hold. Uh, I don't know what he has to prove. I mean, I think it's clear to me that uh, had had Anthony Mayweather not been there at ringside to provide the distraction, the convenient distraction, Jack Stane certainly would have come out on top. And I think this match proves it. Uh, the other thing that's remarkable to me, uh, he, he mentioned, uh, he, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll get to this match later, but he mentions uh, uh, Conspiracy Corrigan being afraid of his legacy, of expanding his legacy. And uh, you got you to gotta think about that for a minute. You got to think about that. There being some merit to those words because it seems like at every turn, Jack Stane gets put in some predicament, some silly humiliation slap match, some cage match or something like that. And uh, and here, here he is asking for a simple request hey look let me let me get another crack at names we're giving cracks to trevor murdoch gets another shot even though he was clearly defeated all these people get shots but not jack's name so there's got to be something to what he's saying yeah it's uh it's going to be interesting to see how the uh future of uh anthony mayweather and uh jack stain plays out uh, and unlike the other stuff we were just talking about uh they they seem far from done with each other uh, the next thing on the line here was, uh, well, actually, the next thing that got brought up was actually the official announcement and logo of NWA USA, uh, which was very cool to see. Yeah. N- nice new uh, retro logo there for uh, the new program. And we get the word that it's going to be on YouTube Saturday, starting on January the 8th at noon. And uh, so an interesting place and time for you to catch NWA USA. And for those that were there on the tapings on Friday, they can confirm. I mean, it's a faster pace more crisp action-packed show uh it's more compact in there and just going to be uh some fun exciting matches dealing mainly like uh like what like we've mentioned just with the junior heavyweight championship and of course a a focus on the national championship so i guess that's hence the the usa um so uh very cool excited about nwa usa uh, Tom Latimer goes to the ring and he's facing off against Miguel Robles. Robles, I say that twice. Rob- uh, Robles. Robles, is that right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, Migs is what I call him because oh. we're bros. Yeah, I was about to say we're not, we're not on like a first name basis with him like you are. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, is actually you know Tom very uh, determined to prove himself. It seemed he was very aggressive with Migs and uh uh beat him around pretty bad but i will say i mean migs had his moments in there he's definitely watching the playbook from nick aldis from their hard times to match up because uh actually almost gets tom latimer for a second there with the same finish that nick aldis used on him uh at hard times too but tom was ready for it this time and so you know you, you you can't get him twice uh with with that one but uh unfortunately for migs tom latimer's a lot to overcome in the middle of that ring. I mean, I'm sure everybody that steps in the ring with him knows that Tom Latimer is not an easy opponent for anyone. And uh, Tom hits that devastating pile driver and gets the, uh, I, I guess, uh, for, for the sake of having to hear Rob complain about me not saying the easy win um, over Mix here. But, Doc, I'll, I'll throw to you there anything you want to add to that. Well, I've always considered you an educated man, Gary, and, and I'm glad that at this point you you you, you – you said exactly what I was going to say, and 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 that speaks not to that's not to discredit Robles, because if you didn't have talent, if you didn't deserve to be in that ring, you wouldn't be there. I'll say this about Conspiracy Corgan: everybody that's in the NWA deserves to be there. Okay, let's get that straight. He's not just throwing goons out there. This this Robles is a young talent, but he's a he's a world class talent. He's an emerging name, and at some point, you're gonna you're gonna know about him. But we're talking about Tom Latimer here. We're talking about you know, as far as I'm concerned, in the in the whole landscape of professional wrestling, he's in that top one percent. You know what I mean? He he's uh, what were you? What, what, I, there was a comment, Gary, that you pointed out on social media that someone said that he looks like, if in a pro wrestling game, he looks like the wrestler that you would design, and he has yeah. the intensity and the skill, and uh, and the foresight, the deliberateness, and the ruthlessness to to make good on that. So what we saw tonight was, uh, you know, it was, it was an easy win, not because Robles is some, you know, uh, pushover opponent, but because Tom Latimer is just a world-class specimen. Yeah. I go ahead. Well, sorry. 
Yeah, and I mean, you know, he he was um, not not to sound like Rob, but Gary, you mentioned that Tom had something to prove. I, I don't know that it was as much as he was trying to prove anything. It's just he's fired up, man, after hard times too, and and I think he's he's bottled up a lot of that intensity. And uh, Miguel Robles just had the unfortunate, uh, you know, circumstance of being across the ring from him when that was going on. But you know, Tom Tom was out there being Tom. I mean, he is he is a uh, a competitor that is at a very very high level. And um, I, you know, I think it was a great experience probably for Robles. I think he he appreciated it uh, as as much as he didn't like getting dropped on his head. I'm sure at the end. Um, but you know. Tom's if he's going to be put in a match and, and forced to compete, he's going to do what he does. And that's ruthless and um, come out of there with a win. I um Yeah. I mean, my, my whole thing was that determined, I just, it just felt like there was yeah. a determination on his face just to go out there and just destroy someone. And, uh, and that's what he did. It just, uh, it felt like Tom, I don't know that he feels like he needs to prove anything necessarily as much as he just is, wanting to be very clear that he is not one to be trifled with no. essentially. And so uh, that's what he was doing to, and for, fortunately for Mix, he was, he was the guy in the middle of the ring for that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 you know, after ring celebration, no gloating, he went in, did his business and got out. Yep. And uh, so Tom Rat Latimer remains very scary. Yeah. I don't think he's speaking too much out of school to say that, uh, you know, obviously there's monitors in the back. We were grateful and fortunate enough to be back there. And uh, yeah, I had seen that comment online. Somebody had uh, mentioned that uh, Tom Latimer looks like a creator wrestler at a video game. And we were we were in the back and Luke Hawks was actually uh, standing back there. And he was like, good God, Tom Latimer is put together. Like, look at him. Like, he is just a beast. And uh, and I mentioned that to him. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what he looks like. So uh, anyway. So respect all throughout the lock, locker room from Tom Latimer. You don't no nobody's uh nobody's just uh, taking him lightly, I don't think. No, there's there's a there's a lot of guys that, that don't like him, maybe, but not a single one of them disrespects him, except for Nick Exactly. <laughs> well, okay. Um <laughs> so next up we had uh Paula Blaze or Paula Mayfield. I think we're going to hear her name pronounced a few different ways throughout the show, but uh, she was in a matchup against genocide. She's been having some issues ever since genocide decided to cash in uh, her title shot to try to go after the hex and those tag team titles. Unfortunately, these two did not come out on top of that. And Paula uh, had issue with genocide and Taryn's trying to keep these two together and trying to maintain order. It's not looking pretty. Uh, genocide always ready to fight whenever somebody wants to step up and start something. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, here we go. Uh, genocide. You know, tried her best to save Paula, but it's uh, not working. She uh, finally, at a certain point, just gets in genocide's face too much. And uh, I, I don't know of a better way to say it. Genocide just had to put her down. And it's, that's too bad. <laughs> but yeah, there they are. That's we'll what happens to everybody who dares to, to 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 run them gums at genocide or to or, or to stand in genocide's way. I've said it for a long time. We've all said it. Genocide. If you don't think that this woman is a future world's champion, then you're uh, you're delusional. You're mistaken. You're not watching what we're watching. You're just completely uninformed. The sky is a limit for her. She is the cyborg. There is not a. She doesn't have a weakness that I can I can decipher. She looks fantastic. She's you know, she's grown so much. She grows exponentially uh, every time we see her. And, you know, aside, you know, next, I love Camille. You guys know that. Uh, Camille is, is doing great honor and bringing great credit to that championship. But Genocide is the one I think that has me very, very intrigued. And I can't wait to see this woman's trajectory. She's going straight to the top. The sky's the limit. And uh, mark my words, she will be wearing a world's championship title at some point in the future, maybe the world's championship. And I'm talking about the bet, the, the belt that Trevor Murdoch wears. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and you know, I know there was some, uh, some confusion, you know, why would she cash in her, her champion series title shot for the tag titles? And when I first heard that, my response is, you know, if she gets a shot at, at the Burke, 
uh, she's not going to need a, a free pass to get there. She's going to earn her way there. So I think she knows that in the back of her mind. And she's like, well, I got a tag team. Let's, let's see what we can do. And unfortunately it didn't go their way. And, you know, tonight, uh, you know, I don't know if they're trying to just squash some beef or trying to, to work out whatever issues are going on. Like you mentioned, Taryn seems, uh, you know, pretty preoccupied with, with keeping the band together, so to speak. Um, but there was obviously, you know, some, some score to settle and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, let yeah, me just say this, Gary, before, before I, I know you got something valid to say, or probably not, but uh, regardless, <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to go jump out this, this window into space. Okay, yeah, to, in <laughs> space. <laughs> I just, I just want to mention though, just, uh, you know, Gary, uh, Will, Will, you, you, you made me think of something when you were talking about tension. I'm thinking like every relationship that I've ever had ever, even with you guys, there's tension in there. Every relationship that's worth having has its problems. But sexual tension. And, and, <laughs> and uh, I thought you were going to um, jump out the window. <laughs> yeah, I should have. Yeah, pl- please do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> um, you know, every the, the very best relationships. And listen, I'm about to give you a PSA right here, guys. You about to, I'm about to put on my doctor cap here, okay? This is free. This is a free clinic. This is a free clinical session. Every relationship in life that's worth having is hard. And you see that. And this is a relatively new organization. I mean, uh, we've talked about this before. When you're film, uh, building teams, you go through that whole cycle, that whole, you know, that whole roller coaster ride of forming, storming, norming, and performing. And I think right now, you know, even though I think uh, anybody really that's matched with Genocide is going to be a formidable tag team, but, you know, Pella Blaze, Pella Mayfield, uh, she's still relatively green. Uh, she's matched with a uh, just a behemoth of an athlete, and they've got some things to work out, obviously. And it seems to me that in that, tr- that, in that slope, right now, they're in the storming phase. It's going to be okay, though. I think it's going to be all right. Go ahead, Gary. Oh, uh, I was just going to say, well, and, and let me say certified. It wasn't, it wasn't front row that, that blocked you there for a second. That was me because you were getting a little too heated in the chat and I, we want to keep this thing positive. So if you can just do that, uh, everything will be smooth sailing, but we're not going to have negativity and just constant ranting and raving about stuff and disagreements, just ruining the mood for everybody else. So just let's try to keep it positive in here. Um, what I was going to say was Taryn Terrell. Like she's trying to obviously keep these two together. She sees something in genocide. She says, sees something in Paola, obviously. And uh, so I, she's trying to work it out. But I also wonder if I, I can't tell if she's delusional. You know, like we had a chance to catch up with her backstage and you, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, I'm standing here with Taryn Terrell. And Taryn, I just wanted to talk to you for just a moment. I know you did. I, who could resist? But Nobody. Nobody can. I, I get it. But you say that, and I've been seeing you on the show recently, and you and Pella and Genocide seem to be having some issues in your friend group. I was just wondering if you had anything to say about that. I won't let you ruin my legacy with your lies, okay? Everybody's fine. I'm fine. Pella's fine. Genocide's fine. We're all fine. I'm fine. And you're fine. Okay? Got it? Everybody's happy. I gotta go. And and so there you go. So I'm fine. I I feel fine. I feel Doc, you fun? He's muted. I'm fine. I'm fine. She saw <laughs> she saw yeah, you need to quit. You 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 you're kicking people out. You're muting me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so and I'm not gonna let you ruin their legacy with your lies gary <laughs> so tone it down <laughs> you okay. need to drop the whole Fair point i think a lot of people feel that way about me now i, I don't I, I don't get it i try you know but it's a I don't trying know. to create a controversy where it doesn't where none exists we're talking the only about thing controversial human... here is for some reason you cabled the show tonight tried to look like nelly or something i don't know what you're doing <laughs> with this oh yeah. you know yeah, you wouldn't you, know because you, you weren't were... there gary yeah you yeah, were long you scooted, gone you scooted so. right out <laughs> When Garrett, when when Rob was getting a fork to the eye, you just <laughs> left him. You left him hanging. Hey, look, I was just walking. I didn't even see what was going on. I didn't know he was going to stop and try to talk to Sion. And why would you, after all the stuff that you say about Sion constantly, why would you just stop and talk to him? Because I'm a journalist, Gary. I'm <laughs> trying to get the scoops. <laughs> you know. Okay. 
All right. right. Fair enough. I guess so. Well, uh, another another group of people that are really, really successful right now. We, t- we talked about uh, Paladin Genocide cashing in to try to get those tag team titles. The Hex retained at hard times, too. And they look like a million bucks every time you see them. They're I, by far, I think, defending these titles more than maybe any other champion in the NWA. They are constantly Correct. defending these women's tag team titles. And uh, another set of guys there, La Rebellion, the NWA World's Tag Team Champions. They look vicious, defeating the end at hard times, too. Still on top of things, taking those tag team titles all over the world. They had a little moment here, and uh, May Valentine had a chance to catch up. My guests at this time are the Hex. La Rebellion, and also Homicide. Guys, all of you had incredible matches at Hard Times 2, and you all came out victorious. It's the only time we have. It's the only time we have, man. How do you feel about your matches? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good, man. You talk, man. I'm going to win the belt. That's it. Go okay. ahead. Lo que pasa aquí, él va a ser el próximo campeón junior completo de esta compañía. Simple. And you know Spanish, so you understood that. And we had one of the best matches of the night, and we retained. So we feel great. How do you guys feel? Excelente. That means excellent, everyone. They tried to stack the odds against us with three other teams. It was a little excessive. But we are fighting champions, and we're champions for a reason. Las campeonas se quedan. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. I got I to gotta say, the, the biggest thing that I'm taking away from this is there is... Uh, there is no limit to the amount of hex puns that uh, Allison K and Marty Bell come yeah. up with. That's that's impressive. All of it. You, make a, you make an excellent point. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a, there, there was a lot more than I expected in that. Hex, but, yeah, it was. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> that's the low hanging fruit. You got it though. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, so that's the low hanging. Doc literally said the one they used in the damn promo. Yeah, he was validating it. Okay. That's right. All right. He's a doctor. Anyway. And and you don't you don't invalidate the things that I'm saying, Gary. You're um, okay. Turn into a therapy session. All right. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, so uh, can we let's, expedite let's... this? <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> please. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's go back to talking about Doc's eye for a second. Uh, Doc uh, was attacked by Scion uh, right before Hard Times 2. Uh, a big match at Hard Times 2 was Scion. Uh, it was clearly not the time to mess with him because he was going to go into war with Tyrus, the manster, uh, the ty- the towering titan of terror, I believe Austin Idol would call him. And uh, that match, if you missed that at Hard Times 2, you should pick up the replay because it was incredible. And those two guys just tore each other apart. But Tyrus managed to come out on top. Now, he also came out on this episode of NWA Power and had a lot to say, was actually in good spirits, it seemed like. And Sion had been asked to talk to him online. And so it was interesting to try to see how these two would follow up. And uh, Kyle Davis made it happen at the podium. Good to hear. Now, I was going to ask you how you felt you did at the pay-per-view. We all see you left as a champion, but you kind of already stated that. And I've been hearing backstage and on social media, too. I think I saw a post about it. Scion uh, actually wanted a moment of your time. Wait, say what? Yeah. Scion, your opponent at the pay-per-view, wanted a moment of your time. I think now would actually be the perfect time to ask Scion to come out here. Back up. You know what? You know what? Let's see what the man has to say. Let's back. Let's hear what the fellas don't do what I don't do it. Okay? He's down. All right. Give the man. I want to hear this. I want to hear this. Okay. Sign, you asked for the time. The floor is yours. I'm here to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to learn something about myself that I desperately needed. You see, I chose you, Tyrus, for a reason. That television championship was a motivation, but you were always the goal. I knew standing up to the tallest and biggest man in our locker room would help me learn a lesson that I never had growing up. And at hard times too, I'm still here. I'm still standing because nobody here knows what it's like growing up with a father who was an NWA champion who never taught you the lessons growing up and I sought them out through guys like you.
And I'm here to say thank you. We are owed nothing in this sport. And you certainly don't owe me a thing. But I'm asking you, man to man, give me a rematch. And I will do anything to prove it. Something in your eyes. I know you. Anything? You'll do anything. Let me talk to my counsel. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. And uh, so, very interesting. So there's a lot to unpack there besides the obsession with eyes that seems to be just going all around on the NWA here. But uh, how about this was let slip here. Scion is the son of a former NWA champion. Uh, I did not, I don't think I saw that coming. Yeah, I got, I had no clue. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of NWA champions, so that doesn't really narrow it down, but you know, kind of, kind of does explain a little bit of it. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin with that, so I, I'm not going to touch it. All right, well, it's strange yeah. to see Doc backing off. Um, but, no, I'm not uh, backing off. You're the only one backing off <laughs> ever around here is you. I'm just saying I don't I don't know what to I don't know what to make of the the former champion comment. I mean, you could that could be he could have been the NWA Florida Brass Knuckles champion. Heck, for all you know, we all had NWA champions in our lineage. <laughs> you know, so I don't know what to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You got the you, you literally have the NWA Tennessee Heavyweight Championship of the World sitting right over here. So I don't know what, what he's talking about. It might be, I don't know. I, I don't want to touch that. And I don't really want to speak much about Sion, frankly. Well, you gotta you gotta wonder if that's where the mask comes into play. If he didn't have the mask and we all knew his identity, if that would be a factor. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting curveball. I don't think we any of us saw that coming. Yeah, uh, well, so uh, clearly things are not finished between Sion and Tyrus. Tyrus, uh, uh, also interesting just how cool Tyrus played that, and uh, they'll get back to it. Sion says they'll do anything to get a rematch, and uh, I expect they're going to figure something out to make him prove that. So we'll see. He didn't say no. Yep, that's true. Uh cool thing that happened tonight unexpected uh just uh i mean at the time i mean if you were there live it it must have been an awesome moment like in the crowd uh mickey james coming out the impact title just displayed prominently on the nwa podium that's one cool thing and then uh she has a package there like a little bag and uh, has a gift for nick aldis who's there with her and uh breaks it out and it is the robes for, or I'm sorry, the jackets, the track jackets, the British Invasion track jackets. Nick Aldis making the offer to Doug Williams. Saw him make his return at Hard Times 2. First time on American soil in eight years, Doug Williams came to the NWA to prove himself. And Nick Aldis now wants him to team back up with him and dominate the tag division. Doug Williams comes out and accepts. These two are going to be a team. And not only are they going to be a team later on in this episode, in the main event, they're going to take on one of the best teams in the National Wrestling Alliance, Hawks Airy. Yes. And and before Doc spins this in, into something, uh, it, it really does feel like Nick is not thinking about Tom anymore and he's fully moved on. This is a pretty big step in, uh, you know, not just for tag team wrestling, but just wrestling history. These guys have have, have tag team and had championships all over the world together. And, um, you know, but they've been focused on their singles uh, careers and done well for themselves ever since then. So seeing this kind of reunion um, as a guy who loves tag team wrestling uh, was really exciting for me. And, uh, you know, we'll get there in the main event, but uh, it was just cool to see them back together again. Uh, we've got a couple things going on here. One is on the part of Nick Aldis, we've got avoidance going on. It's a it's a common you know psychological uh, feature of someone who who realizes that that someone else has their number, and that's what's going on here. He's you know kind of brushing that aside as though it's not an issue still, which it is. But the bigger issue is, you know, whatever whatever's going on right now, whatever my personal feelings are towards Nick Aldis. 
Um, this one kind of stings a little bit because how long have you heard the doc on here talking about the British invasion and Doug Williams? And it's, it's a little ironic, <laughs> you know, that it's like, uh, raining on your wedding day, like a free ride when you've already paid. Yeah. Okay. I wanted this a year ago when it would have mattered. Okay. So uh, great tag team. I'm excited to see it again. The NWA tag team scene is red hot. It's, it's the best in the world. It keeps getting better literally by the hour. Um, Doug Williams is someone that, that everybody venerates. It's someone that I venerate as a fan. I know you do will as a, as a student of tag team wrestling. I'm excited that he's in the NWA. I'm just a little bit hurt and a little bit, I guess, burnt, you know, that it's happening at this point in Nick Aldis's career, not when he could really have made, uh, strictly business, perhaps the greatest faction uh, or organization of all times. Hmm. That's fair. Um, what is it you, I, and, I'll, and I'll validate you. You have been saying that for a long time, even, you know, on over on our channel at youtube.com slash this is pro wrestling. Go subscribe. Um, yeah. I mean, we've been talking about Doug for, for years. So yeah, it was really probably cool. just, we're hoping he would join strictly business, right? Well, that's what that's what Doc wanted. I yeah, yeah. I, I always felt like he would be uh, he would be a good extra body in there, and as he seemed to, you know, Nick uh, talks about having studied. He refers multiple times in his catalog of, of fantastic promos. You say what you want about him, Nick can talk better than anybody, and he refers to uh, Doug Will uh, Doug uh, Williams as his learning tree, and that's and 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 it's not just Nick now. I mean you probably got five or six men in that locker room that we saw that are, can say the same thing. Men like Tom Latimer, uh, you know, who studied under him. Some of these younger guys like, uh, um, dirty Dango and, um, and, uh, you know, Matt Taven, they all look to Mike Bennett. They all look to Doug Williams with a great deal of reverence and all they've all studied his work. Uh, they've all learned from him, if not directly, certainly by extension. And, uh, I'm telling you right now, man, Doug Williams being in the NWA is important. It's one of the most important happenings that we've seen. Um, it's going to be seismic. It's going to create, uh, you know, ripple effects that may reverberate for years. Um, and, you know, it's I, I'm there's part of me that's really excited to see this. This the part that, that I share with Will. And there's another part that feels burned because I think that there was an opportunity that's missed. We could be sitting right now with an organization that literally manipulates and owns and, and dictates the terms of pro wrestling. Uh, but you know, that, that ship has sailed now. Uh, it looks like Nick Aldis and, and uh, Doug Williams are going to try their hand in the tag team division. They're, they're good. They're good. Uh, they're an instant credible threat to La Rebellion, the end to anybody. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I like it and I hate it. At least you're consistent. <laughs> um question mark yeah, it's uh uh strictly confusing is how i would refer to it <laughs> um all right uh, well uh the uh i just wanted to take a second to just uh thank everybody again for being here we're uh you know you can see our twitter handles and instagram myspace and uh as doc would say snack shack or whatever he says snack shack. Um, <laughs> but uh we're from a, a show called tipw at this is this is pro wrestling at tipw show on twitter and everything if you give us a follow there we also have our own youtube um so it'd be cool to get a subscribe from you um but i also want to just mainly thank you guys ezra frank Bodie, our boy turbo is in the chat tonight we've seen the lovely genocide in the chat we've seen eric frank andrews jack albert uh and just all of you, thank you so much for also being the chat. Just feels extra lively tonight. Once you know, when you get some positive conversation going, it's just uh, it's cool to see all you guys enjoying and digging the uh, NWA discussion. And 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 I can promise you that the NWA is grateful for every single member of the hashtag NWA fam. Without you guys, uh, we look on social media. There's an a, a actual quote that like Billy Corgan in one of the VIP sessions talking about that it's not about TikTok or or whatever social post that's going to make the difference. It's it's you guys buying tickets or, or showing up, being enthusiastic and caring about the product. So we're grateful and we're grateful for them for giving us the opportunity to do a post show like this and just literally have no limits on how long we just sit here and just shoot the breeze with you guys and uh, just talk about the shows. Uh, that said, uh, Jack Stane gets his matchup with the Mims. 
in one of the uh, biggest matches of the night. And uh, unfortunately for Mims, just not enough this time around. Uh, Anthony Mayweather was at the commentary position. He was hanging out, mm-hmm. but uh, Jack Stane just uh, in the end, Mims, Mims put up a fight. Don't get me wrong. Mims is a promising prospect in the NWA. And I think a future star, future champion in the promotion, but tonight, but Jack in the Stane, end, but in the end, Jack Stane solidified his spot uh, in the National Wrestling Alliance. Still and why has he's his a, Champion Series title shot. I was going to say and and showed why he is a very credible threat for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship at any time. And I gotta say, let, let me let me say this, Will. I'm, I don't want to cut you off, Will. I feel like we're 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 vibing tonight, man. Me and you. Um, we're cool. We're cool. This is the. the, the let me speak to something about the work environment there at, at the NWA. It's obviously a hostile work environment. Okay. It's obviously not a safe place, but it, you know, Jack's Dane's problem with Mims at the pay-per-view at hard times too, was that Anthony Mayweather was allowed to be at ringside. Right? So now he's not at ringside. Oh, but he's at the commentary table, still distracting. I guess just anybody can go up to the commentary table. Anybody who wants to just in this company can just go up there. You can't tell me there's not something to Jack Stane's suspicion about the leadership in this company and them having something in it for him. You can't tell me that that's not a valid concern. You don't think just, you know, I mean, Mims is the star student of of Anthony Mayweather and they, you know, just wanted some insight there on commentary. You don't think that's a valid reason to to put him in there? Yeah, that, that they wanted insight on comment. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what we do every time. Every time someone wrestles, we bring their teacher out. Listen, I mean, if if I could throw in here that you know Jack Stane still has his Champion Series title shot. The last time we saw Jack Stane on NWA Power, he was put in a position that you also argue was a Corgan conspiracy. That if he lost the match, he would lose his Champion Series title. Jack Stane just left. Now, Billy Corgan, if he really wanted to right at that moment, could have stripped Jack Stane of his his championship match. And he has not done that. Now, first of all, let's not throw little technicalities in there. The bottom line here is that, yes, to start to begin with with what you said, Jack Stane still has his title shot. It's not because of William Patrick Corgan. It's in spite of William Patrick Corgan. All right. Well, uh, I guess that's that's fine. Well, uh, we got a nice promo with uh, Gary's. Gary's tired, <laughs> as you can tell. I can't. I can't. Rob, he's always got something. Uh, he's the dog. great promo with the Hawks boys right before this. They're ready to compete. Oh, I love those guys. The good father son duo. Just, just one of the most credible athletic tag teams you'll ever see. And uh, they get interrupted here uh, by the. Uh, dirty, sexy boys, uh, dirty tango and JTG. And uh, uh, I actually wish I had that clip, but I don't. But they uh, uh, will be hearing a lot more from them. And uh, the dirty, sexy boys are something else. But I assume their pads are going to cross again someday in the future. Uh, Trevor nope. Murdoch. Yeah, then Trevor Murdoch comes out and uh, he wants to address the Matt Cardona situation. And Trevor, as he's apt to do, has a lot to say and is very fiery doing it. NWA fans joining me at this time, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Trevor Murdoch. Now, Trevor, hard times too, as we went off the air, was hard times for you. You were left laying after what we saw. That seems to be the common thread with me, Kyle. Ever since I won this world title, every Tom, Dick, and Harry has come up from behind and hit me. Last time I checked, this belt meant honor, respect, and a grown-ass man should have it. And every single time I get a win or I get an opportunity, some jackass has got to hit me from behind. Chris Adonis, when I'm chasing after after Nick Aldis, jumps me from behind. Mike Knox locks me in a cage, chains it, and proceeds to beat me with a chair in front of my own child. And now, 
Matt Cordonia. You randomly show up at the weakest point and then stand there and look at me and cheer? What the hell is wrong with you? If you want to be world champion, and that's not just for Matt, it's for everybody, come at me direct, face to face. Hey, hey. We just got over saying that everybody likes to attack. And please tell me that's not where this is going. Excuse me, Trevor, unlike these other jacasses you described, I come in peace, bearing gifts of thanksgiving and congratulations. Congratulations on a successful title defense. Congratulations on retaining the NWA World Champion. Congratulations on being a champion that Harley would be proud of, no doubt. And thank you for giving me this time to address the white and red elephant in the room, shall we say. You are as classy and as tactful as that hat you're wearing. That was a compliment, silence. I would like to take this opportunity to address people that are talking, people that are talking about Aaron. And I want to assure everyone that Aaron has never been better. My good friend Kratos has kind of made the light bulb go off. I am back, I have never been better and I wanted to reassure you and everyone out here, so let's thank Trevor. And I will now take a moment for your adulation. And I now leave you, thank you very much. Are you Are you me? I just talked about this. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so there's a lot, a lot to unpack there too. Uh, you know, you, you want to talk about the tag team division, uh, Aaron Stevens and Kratos. Kratos. Yeah. Yeah. Kratos. So they're, they're, they're doing, uh, fine work. (laughs) They're, they're doing fine work themselves for a lot of people thinking that those two guys were just two thrown together dudes. They've been a tag team for a considerable amount of time. So I will give them this. I wonder when people are going to start giving them credit as a, uh, uh, credible, legitimate tag team because they they've been doing this uh, for a good bit now, and uh, I'm not sure what the the reason for interrupting Trevor Murdoch exactly would have been. Uh, before that, Trevor Murdoch making very good points about how many times in his journey to becoming the world's champion, and even since becoming the world's champion, uh, he is consistently attacked from behind, and all he's ever said is. Come at me correct. I'll be happy to fight you. Like he is he is not backing down. He's not afraid of anyone. Yet for some reason, people still consistently uh try to jump him and uh take advantage of his blind spots. But I don't know, Will. It just feels weird. Yeah, no, I mean, <clears throat> it's a great point. And going back all the way, like he said, to to Chris Adonis. Um, and uh, you know it's it's one of those things that we talk about all the time when you hold that title when you hold sweet charlotte you you've got a target on your back uh and i'm sure sure doc can shed some light on this but it didn't seem like nick aldis was getting jumped a lot from behind uh maybe he was just you know protected by strictly business and people weren't weren't going to do that trevor's uh kind of a lone wolf so people uh i guess feel like they can just jump in and take advantage of that i don't know but uh like we said he's he's definitely got a target on his back there's a lot of people uh in and out of the NWA, as we see with Matt Cardona now, um, that that want to get their hands on 10 pounds of gold. And uh, it's the most coveted prize in, in this sport. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Trevor's clearly frustrated. He's got uh, a lot on his mind. He's a little stressed out. And, um, yeah, had had some – I feel like he's he had a lot more to say to Matt Cardona before he got interrupted. So I'm hoping we'll get to hear uh, some more of his thoughts. Let him continue maybe uninterrupted next time. Un, un, ironically or not, uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, things that was consistent here is uh, Kratos, which feels like an incorrect pronunciation of uh, Kratos. Uh, also, Matt Cardonia. Yeah. Um, so just uh, just an He's interesting moment at all times here in this promo. But Doc, I'm curious about your thoughts. 
Uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, nobody was attacking Nick Aldis from behind. It had really very little to do with strictly business. It had to do the fact with back in those days, Nick Aldis was a predator. He was the one doing the seeking and destroying. Uh, that seems to have changed now. He's become a little softer in his approach, a little more genteel, as it were. And I think Trevor Murdoch's, you know, there's nothing deficient about Trevor Murdoch. There's no reason why he can't same have that same sort of killer instinct. But right now he's still getting his bearing. Uh, you know, he's only had the title for less than 100 days now. He's had a couple of quality defenses under his uh, belt, Attila Khan, um, and now uh, Knox. Um, and so he's still he's still kind of feeling his situation. I think, I think that, you know, he was so committed to winning this championship. I don't know that in his soul that he expected it. He was willing to lay it all on the line. And I think that night, I mean, we were all there when it happened. That night he was resolved. He was resolved. There was a part of him that thought he was leaving the business that night you know, leaving the sport for good. And so uh, there's a bit probably of, of and I'm just psychoanalyzing here. Obviously you'll have to ask Trevor about his, where his headspace is as, as Gary likes to say. Um, but it seems to me that he's getting his footing that part of him. And I'm not saying, you know, anybody who goes and competes for the championship at this level has to have confidence, but his confidence in those days after, you know, having, run into a brick wall multiple times, having suffered uh, suffered a cling loss in Charlotte against Nick Aldis, his confidence was, you know, was had taken a bit of a hit. And I think part of him did not expect to be in this position today where he's at now. And so there's a lot of things going on psychologically with Trevor. But the point is, goes back to what I was saying earlier. We've got, you know, the, the Wild West going on. Anybody can do anything. Matt Cardonia just walked through that curtain like he owned the place. Um I think his intentions were good. I don't think that, that anything he did was nefarious. I think that Trevor might be a little bit paranoid because of what happened with Mike Knox, and he might be projecting what Mike Knox did onto Mike Cardona, uh, or Cardona. Sorry, Trevor's got me saying Cardona here. But uh, I don't know. There's just a, We've got a complex situation. I think uh, what, what we see right now is Trevor feeling the weight of carrying the most prestigious trophy in the world. When you carry that trophy – Everybody in the world wants a piece of you. Everybody. That's something that Nick Aldis seemed to manage with ease and with a, a great deal of uh, of uh, skill. And he managed to do it for 1,044 days on the second run. That's not counting the 200-plus days on the first run. Uh, so now we're 100 days into it, Trevor. You know, uh, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Yeah, you, you know, you... It's funny though to me that you're you're talking about paranoia from Trevor Murdoch, but then also saying exactly that everybody wants a piece of that world's heavyweight championship that that should be expected. There was a like, gleam in Matt Cardona in his eyes when he picked that title up. You can't deny that there was something in him that uh, he, he. I don't know. I, there's I can't, a I, gleam. I, there's a gleam in all of our eyes when we pick that title up. <laughs> If you're a human being with a pulse, when you hold that title, you have, and we're not wrestlers. We're journalists. We, we cover the news. <laughs> Matt Cardona is a wrestler. He, he just like every wrestler who lives, moves and breathes in this world wants, they want trophies, but at the end of the day, they want one trophy. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Matt Cardona doesn't want that, but I don't think that he's out here trying to do what Mike Knox did. And now it's time for your weather. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was like, really? I was like, part of me was like, oh, okay, here we I go. I thought you had a clip it's, or something. I was like, it's cold <laughs> and dark outside. <laughs> and starry. <laughs> and no one can hear you scream in space. Uh, one of the things I love about the NWA, by the way, is not only just the fact that you guys are all in the chat, just like going off here, but just to point out some of the things people are saying. Uh, I, I saw earlier, by the way, just for instance, uh, people saying they hope they see Christy James, like more of Christy James. I hope she comes back. I saw somebody talking about uh, that they they wanted to see Miss Kate. I, I saw like these are literally things that are uh, coming up in the chat room, and uh, it, it just makes me happy because stay tuned. I saw Maddie Rinkowski that she deserves to get a shot in the National Wrestling Alliance. She would fit in really well. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, if you're not subscribed to NWA Power on Fight TV, you got to do it because uh, you, you might find that they're listening. They see what you're saying. They hear you out. And, uh, yeah, and, and and Doc does make a good point. I mean, the, the, the 10 pounds of gold is certainly like the one ring from Star Trek. It's uh, It's just... 
you know, that's that was a doc joke. I don't know that, that I just did. It's because I spent yeah. all weekend with him. It was, <laughs> it was, it was. Um, I was like, yeah, anyway. I, saw, I, I saw that episode of Lord from the Rings. <laughs> I, saw, <laughs> I, I know what you did there. <laughs> Lord oh from the my Rings. God. Lord from the Rings. The dog mm, the, the, too much uh, time boy, together. The, too much time together. Voyage of the Dawn Treader. <laughs> <laughs> he, brought, he found a way to bring C.S. Lewis into it. Uh, all right. Anyway, what was I going to talk about? Uh, Turbo said, don't sleep on Scion. That's that's my favorite. A man with nothing to lose. Turbo, did you see Scion and Doc? Uh, you know who chat? didn't see Scion and Doc? You, Gary. <laughs> I, I was gone. I wasn't even in the room anymore. Exactly. I just, I just, I just, you, this you joker know. took on. Like, oh, I'm, I'm out. They said they got. They, they said they got catering. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> I was gone. I was it. Yeah. You, you, those days. I'm gonna tell you right now. You get, I'm gonna you tell you get right hungry. Now. Now I'm gonna tell you right now. There's gonna be lawsuits, though. I've got one of my lawyers is like that. That uh, one of your Bill, one of my lawyer, one of my legal team said that Bill Barron specifically gave me a waiver for him because this was planned. <laughs> you know, so so I don't know if I've got a legal ground to stand on or not, but but I'm looking into it. Well, before we get into this main event matchup, let's talk about uh, Doc. I'm going to give you a chance to show why you're the Doc. I actually am grateful that, or I'm happy that I know the answer to this question. Uh, and and a lot of this is from hanging out with a guy like you. But uh, the question was being talked about in the chat just a second ago, so I want to throw there. Uh, there was an Australian flag on that ten pounds of gold at one point, wasn't there? There was. There was uh, 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 until very recently. <laughs> And I think, uh, and I, I think what you might see, that was uh, that was my girl Noni McPony, one of my favorite members of the hashtag NW Fam that asked that. I got to meet her in person. Just lovely, lovely person. Glad to have met you, Noni. Um, that flag uh, w was changed out or rotate. Let's just say rotated out. I'm not certain it's a permanent change, but it was rotated out uh, out of acknowledgement of the great accomplishment uh, of. Nick Aldis uh, for reaching that sixth longest reign of all time. I think it was time to acknowledge uh, his accomplishment. When you've got him being in the top six reigns, it doesn't make sense to not have that British flag, that Union Jack that represents Australia. It represents all the Commonwealth nations as well. So it's not as though Australia was displaced. I think that the flag that was chosen to be put in its place was a little more comprehensive. Uh, representative of of all of the nations that that uh, have once or now presently stand as part of the of the great British Empire, and in a sense, it also represents the United States, which is on there as well because that is the mothership. Um, and uh, so, so there it is. And and again, um, not sure that that's going to be a permanent thing. I think it's a great addition to the flag. Every now and again, you know, we don't want to mess with that trophy very often. That is the most prestigious trophy, but uh, but that's not the first time that there have been minor tweaks to this belt you know the strap at one point was red velvet when it was originally uh, founded there have been different configurations of the flags there's a whole book about it uh that i can i can bring up here once uh if gary shows a clip i can go fetch it real quick so you can look into it but i think it's appropriate and again uh the uh that 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 union jack on there represents pretty much uh most of the world including australia uh, uh but it, it was certainly a uh a tip of the hat to the great accomplishment that Nick Aldis uh, achieved. And uh, again, say what you want about it. I can say what I want about him. Nick Aldis is the greatest world champion of the modern era. What he accomplished in that second reign specifically may never happen again in our lifetimes, just because the nature of the sport has changed. Athletes are so much more skilled, so much better trained, so much bigger. Uh, it just doesn't happen. World championships reigns don't last a thousand days anymore. Um, and so it was appropriate, you know, for someone who is a purist and a very conservative person when it comes to, and I'd like to hear James Lawrence's thoughts on this too, because I know he loves that title, maybe even more than I do. Um, we don't like to see that belt tampered with, uh, but when, when it is tampered with, with, it needs to be intentional and deliberate and for a reason. And I think the reason uh, there was, was a legitimate one. So hopefully that answers the question. Uh, if we got a clip to show up here in a little bit, I'll try to grab that book and show you where you can find more information about this. Well, I can throw to a clip here in just a second. Um, the um, big main event of this uh, night, uh, just to round off the show there, was uh, Hawks Airy takes on the British Invasion. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's too much uh, speaking out of school here to say that 
we, we happened to have a conversation with Nick where like he was offered, you know, just because of his legacy, um, you know, he was, he was offered that opportunity. Like, is there something special you want with this championship? You know, like what, I don't know. There was a discussion and, and, and Nick was able to present to Mr. Corgan, I think uh, the, uh, the idea that he would love to see the union Jack on there. And uh, that was, that was granted to him. And uh, so that's, that's where you're seeing that uh, the, the, you know, and, and, and like Jack said, this is a once in a lifetime historical event. So if you're ever going to, if you are going to do anything with it, that's, that's the moment to do it. So, um, and, and think of it again, think of it as a rotation. We've seen different sequences of flags, uh, usually those flags that get love on that on that particular trophy have have significance in the history of the NWA. You've got the flag of Mexico, you've got Japan, Canada, the United States. Uh, there there are very select flags that are on there, and it was time. It was way past due for this flag to get on there. Uh, it, again, I don't think with this belt that anything is necessarily necessarily permanent. But the the general the general broad stroke of the belt is permanent. You know, we there there are small tweaks here and there. There've been, I think we counted Gary and Will. I think we counted at one point maybe uh, thirty seven or thirty eight adjustments to the to the strap all in history. Maybe we could be off by a few here and there. James Lawrence again is going to have a more uh, informed answer about that because he studies that belt in in, in particular. Uh, he's a, he's he's probably the uh, <laughs> you know he knows more about it than I do for sure. I, yeah, but you know, I'm not sure it's a permanent thing, but it's certainly an appropriate thing. Yeah. Um, so in the matchup, British Invasion taking on Hawks Airy. And just, I mean, this is this is part of the reason you should be subscribed to NWA Power on Fight TV um, because of the high quality athleticism that was involved in this matchup. These are two fantastic tag teams. Just nothing more to say except that that. They're just both at, at the top of the chain, of the food chain, as far as tag team wrestling goes. Uh, British Invasion, obviously, earning that spot from way back, and they haven't um, lost a step. It seems these two guys are in peak condition, going up against Hawks Airy, who you know Luke Hawks is is perhaps one of the best technical wrestlers in the world right now, and PJ Hawks looks like it too, and he's he's so young like the the levels that pj hawks is going to go to just astound me but uh these two teams went at it and uh unfortunately for hawks area tonight was not their night uh the uh british invasion coming out on top and their return here on nwa power we had a chance to catch up with hawks area after the match and uh this is what they had to say I'm sitting in the back with Hawks Harry. Big match tonight against the British Invasion. Guys, you didn't come out on top, but just wanted to collect your thoughts on what, what you went through in the ring there. We might not have came out on top, but here's the deal. It was one hell of a match. British Invasion, Doug Williams, Nick Aldis, you're two hell, hell, hell of competitors. You may, you may have more experience in tag team wrestling than Hawks Harry, but don't let that deter us because we're coming back, and we're coming back bigger and better than ever, and I don't care if we wrestle you five more times or 500 more times. The fact of the matter is, Hawks Airy wants another piece of British Invasion. That's right. Doug, you're a hell of a technician. I loved every second of being in that ring and scrapping with you. And Nick, you are the national treasure, the longest reigning world champion of the modern era. But we are Hawks Airy. We are the only active father-son tag team and wrestling today and like my old man says we don't just start something we, we finish, finish it. it and we want another shot against you and we're coming for those nwa tag team championships if you don't think the teams by the way that are in the national wrestling alliance that, that they don't that they're uh, a not the be- like that they're just the best in the world and b that they don't see uh, the respect that those tag team titles command. Um, that's, that's, a, uh, if I could sound like a wrestler for a second, even though, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, let me just say that's a shoot brother. They all, they all respect those titles. And, uh, I mean, I literally, you know, on a, uh, 
weird downtime that you very rarely get of like hanging out in a hotel lobby and happening to catch Mecha Wolf walking through and just asking him a few questions just personally. Uh, Mecha Wolf discussed about how important it was for him to take those tag team titles all over the world and that they're the best tag team in the world for a shoot. And it's partly because they hold those titles. Those are the titles that matter. So, uh, but, but there, there you see it with Hawks Harry too, uh, yeah. that, that those guys, a respect those tag team titles. They want them bad. Also knew exactly who they were stepping in the ring with tonight and knew that they didn't come out on top, but also know that's not the last time they're probably going to run into those two guys and they're looking forward to it. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why I love, um, the NWA number one, but tag team wrestling, but in the NWA there's. And this is this is how pro wrestling should be, you know. It, it, no matter if you're a tag team or a singles competitor, your your goal in the back of your mind is always the, the the title. It's always the championship. And so, you know, we are blessed right now, as Rob said, with just tons and tons of incredible tag teams, and not just not just tag teams, not just guys who who come together and and wrestle matches together, but guys that have been doing it for years. Guys that are father and son, as we just saw, you know, there's a connection there. There's a connection with Nick Aldis and Doug Williams that you can't replicate with, you know, with a lot of other people. There's a connection with La Rebellion and they hold those belts. So there's a connection with the end. These guys, uh, they live to to wrestle as part of a tag team and every match they have, even if it's just a, a match like this, I say just a match like this. This was a huge match tonight, a huge main event. Um, but Hawks Airy and British Invasion in the back of both of those teams' minds, you heard it from their own mouths today, is the tag team gold. That's what they're doing this for. And and that's 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 wrestling. That's prize fight wrestling. That's what makes it exciting. And uh, that's why I love the NWA. And Doc, before you jump in there, I, I just want to say too, another point I wanted to make was uh, one thing I really respect too is that the NWA – prizes those titles your main event tonight was the tag team wrestling match i mean that's not a thing you get in a lot of places uh those those tag team titles can main event just like the tv title can main event just like the national title can main event and of course everybody's ultimate goal someday somewhere somehow is that 10 pounds of gold but every single title in the nwa matters a lot no 100 percent, and uh I think tag team wrestling is something that that's historically been associated with the National Wrestling Alliance, and 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 again, I feel like I'm. Gosh, I hate to I hate to I've already paid William Patrick Corrigan one or two compliments tonight. I hate to pay him a third one, but but he 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 uh, he understands that. Whatever you want to say about whatever I want to say about him, he understands that, and uh, there there is a a very mission oriented focus on on building up this tag team division to be one of the most elite. And I would say right now, I think we're there. We're long past there. And when you add a team like the British Invasion and uh, and uh, obviously Hawks Series in that mix, gosh, man, what, what, what I, well, who else? Who else has a better tag team division? Uh, let, let me tell you this. About this match, Hawks Series, you know, they talk about doing this 5,500 times, whatever. If Hawks Series, because we've seen them. We've seen them compete. We saw them in St. Louis. We, You know, we were there. Hawks area and British invasion go 500 matches. They win 200 of those easy. You know, I mean, this is something that could go either way. These are world-class tag teams. I think the probably the disadvantage in this particular match comes down to PJ. And if PJ Hawks, because of his youth and inexperience is the disadvantage, then you are doing pretty well for yourself. You know what I mean? If that's a disadvantage, then I'm telling you right now, just like we said about genocide earlier, you know, the sky is the limit for this tag team. The, the 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 sky knows no bounds. They are going to hold championships, maybe here, but certainly somewhere. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this. But tonight, you know, I, I think that uh, Nick Aldis and Doug Williams rekindling, you know, reuniting that tag team. There was so much emotion on the line. I don't know that the University of Alabama could have beaten them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Uh, yeah, I, I so, think tonight was a was the very definition of like the importance of experience. Like those, the, Nick Aldis and Doug Williams know each other like no others. These guys have known each other for many, many years. They've worked together. They've tagged together. They've won tag team titles all over the world. They are a solid, consistent tag team. And even though they've had that separation for a while, both men separately have been 
uh, obviously doing pretty damn good on their own too. So they're coming back together. They haven't lost a step and and that's just professionalism. Um, I, that out of the way, I want to say you back to your PJ Hawks point guys, PJ Hawks, who is the person I mean, credit where it's due. Luke Hawks, Luke Hawks is big and bad and tough. And I said it earlier in the show, one of the best technical wrestlers in the business right now, Luke Hawks is fantastic, but his son, PJ Perry, Perry is, is that guy who's the one who said, I enjoyed the fact that I was in there with Doug Williams. That was an experience. He respected the fact that he was stepping in the ring with Doug Williams. Who's the person who said, I just wrestled the longest rating, most important world's champion in the modern era. Like that's, he knew, he knew where he was and what he was doing. He knew what he was up against. And so that even doesn't deter him from coming back. It, it only encourages him. He was like, I had your number at points in there. And he did. He had, he had them for points. There was there, the wrestling between PJ and Doug in this matchup was phenomenal. The moments you could see it in Doug's eyes. There were the times where they started grappling and, Doug had to grab the ropes to be like, all right, hold on, hold on a second, kid. <laughs> Wait, let me, mm -hmm. all right, I was yep. underestimating you. <laughs> and so, like, you know, and he'd turn around to Nick Aldis and like, he's he's pretty good. <laughs> and yep. Like, he'd come back around and the, and, the, and 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 not only in technical wrestling. How about that move? The the, the moment where PJ, uh, I wish I had a clip of it right here, where like he caught Doug Williams and deadlifted that man up into a suplex. It dropped him like uh, that. That moment, you're like, okay, now I have to respect the power too. PJ Hawks, once he collects himself, matures even more, becomes more, more proficient with every single skill he's been given. That that kid, that kid's headed straight to the top. All right. Well, um, doggone so straight. <laughs> you doggone straight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm sorry. I just went off on uh, about Hawks area. I'm just a big fan of those guys. They're they're really really good, and I love those guys. I'm happy to see British Invasion back. It's just an exciting time, and even more exciting to know that in March it's already been announced. I mean, the Crockett Cup is returning, so this is you you can see where this is headed. You can see there's a possibility the British Invasion and Hawks area are going to run head to head at some point. Uh, so. That that information's out there, so I don't uh, feel so bad saying it. But they, yeah, it's coming back, and I I can't be more excited for a lot of reasons, uh, not the least of which in 2019 Crockett Cup was exactly the point that I first had my toes like the opportunity to dip my toes into the National Wrestling Alliance Live, and uh, and then it's led to this. So it's just been a it, it feels like a full circle moment, like all the way around, and just to see the level of competition that's going into it now. Um, just excited. Um, I, I want to mention this before we like start to round this thing down and talk to the chat a little bit. Let Doc show you the book that he was talking about earlier and that sort of thing. One of the big things that happened um, at Hard Times 2 that we should discuss for just a second and just take a moment. Since they ended the show on this, I definitely want to make sure we throw this in there. Obviously, you guys saw the moment with the Pope uh, suffering an injury at Hard Times 2. And it was a very scary moment for a lot of us. I'm just going to show you the clip here real quick. And as this crowd here chants for the Hawks, we have to take a moment to reference what happened at Hard Times 2 after a brutal assault by Mike Knox. Pope was hospitalized. He is recovering after a very, very vicious concussion. Ooh. So hopefully we'll be able to see him soon. He is not medically cleared for this week. It is unlikely he'll, he's going to be cleared for the next few weeks. But right now, let's take you back so you can see what happened at Hard Times 2. It's Pope! It's Pope! Here comes Pope taking it to Mike Knox now. Oh and Cardona with a blindside in the Pope! Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, it's this incredible brawl what here! What is going on here? The match oh, no, 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 The match has come to an end, but clearly the action has not. And of course, thoughts and prayers always with Pope. We know you're a fighter. We, we know we're going to see you right back here we in the NWA Pope. arena. We love you, Pope.
I'm not 100% sure what happened there at the end of that. <laughs> but I was um, like, are we done? Are we, should I leave? Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, heck, man. We get, we get off early tonight. <laughs> heck, yeah, I'm taking these out. <laughs> Take this oh, off. Man. <laughs> not to turn that moment into a joke. Something weird happened with that clip. It was uh, giving us trouble. That was part of our technical difficulties loading up today. But we want to show that uh, just to, to, to show you the, the situation with Pope. It was all over the news sites and that sort of thing. So, uh, so perhaps you guys saw it. But uh, that was legitimate. Um, that, that uh, you know, Pope. Pope was hurt at the end of that. It was a very scary moment uh, in in GPB at that time that uh, Pope was hurt. He was he was one hundred percent left in an ambulance that evening, and uh, and you always hear that in the interviews. It's just the things that like uh, wrestlers do so much to their bodies throughout, but it's it's like sometimes it'll be just like the 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 thing that you don't expect to be the thing that really like takes somebody out. Um, but there it is like Pope, uh, Pope, Pope. I, I, I can say at this point is, uh, you know, he, he's re- recovering and, uh, is doing a lot, lot better. He's up and moving around and that sort of thing. We had a chance to, to see him briefly and, uh, say hello to him. And so, uh, we're happy for Pope, but, uh, you know, it was a it was a scary moment in in, in the studio that night. It was. Uh, uh, I don't. You know, we wrestling is an emotional sport. We see a lot of things play out. Guys like me and Will and Gary can armchair quarterback, and we can take issue with certain decisions that people make, and um, whether it be you know Nick Aldis and Strictly Business or or you know La Rebellion or whatever, we can we can we can sit here and kind of judge and critique. A performance. So when we do it, we do it with athleticism in mind. We do it because we consider this a sport, and sports are about attaining championships. It's not about somebody getting hurt. Um, and uh, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. You guys have heard me for the last three or four weeks excoriate uh, Knox for his attack on uh, Trevor Murdoch. I don't like Trevor Murdoch. We all know I don't. I don't talk to the guy. Uh, but I don't want him to be hurt. I don't want his son to be pushed around. It's not about, you know, you don't do that. And I don't want to see anybody hurt in the ring in, in, or, or outside. So when this happens, we all have to take pause. We have to acknowledge the the great price that these uh, wrestlers pay, pay and what they put on the line each and every night. I'm not saying, you know, I don't think that Cardona intended to hurt, uh, you know, Pope. I, I don't think he did, but, it, you know, it's collateral damage there. And it happened, and he was hurt, and we were all concerned, and we all wish Pope uh, well. We, we want him to recover because I think the NWA is much better when Pope is active, when he's chasing championships, when he's in the ring. Um, this is about assembling the greatest um, body of competition in the world, which is what, you know, President Corgan is attempting to do. And I think Cardona certainly adds a lot to that. But you cannot deny the fact that so does Pope, and uh, you know he's very high on all of our lists. I think everybody expects uh, expects him to one day ascend to the to the highest levels of, of the the peak of the mountain and, and wear that championship belt. Um, so we wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, we're you know we uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him, and uh, you know we hope to see you back soon, Pope. That's the thing, uh, you know, you mentioned the thing with Matt Cardona and, 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 and even Knox. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a weird line with, with professional wrestling. I mean, Trevor was even, you know, his son's a, his son's a big boy. And I know that was like for him crossing the line that Knox put his hands on his son at one point, um, you know, to push him out of the way. And uh, it's, it's, you, you mentioned Cardona not wanting to hurt, pope it's it's not it, like they don't have issue it's it's the fact that like wrestlers are very strong larger than life people and when they go out there they they oftentimes you've seen it you you see professional wrestlers out there they 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 often go out there thinking you know they've, they've got the idea they're invincible and then for what they put themselves through and do uh you know, it's just it's it's tough when something puts someone down longer term than expected, and uh, and that and that's the thing here. Like Pope, uh, you know, after the crowd's gone and everything is still, you know, is still suffering from the damage that was uh, given to him there, and uh, it was just a scary moment. And 
anyway, all that out of the way, we're glad that uh, Pope is alive and kicking and doing well. And he's going to be uh, somebody said in there, Pope will be pimping again. And he, he, he certainly will Pope, Pope will be back. And uh, so, but we just wanted to, to, to mention all of that too. Uh, because, well, we love Pope. Like we, we love the guy. Like he's, he's, he's fantastic in and out of the ring. He's a good guy. And, and Noni, I'll, I'll give you props again tonight. You, you made an excellent point. In lieu of get well cards, you could donate to the Pope's charity, the Love Alive charity that he has right now. And I'm sure that he would be grateful for that. Um, and the NWA is actually going to be working with the Love Alive charity. There'll be more information on that to come, but, uh, there there's going to be some stuff going on in Jacksonville for that. And, uh, uh, the Pope, Pope looking out for his community and uh, just a just legitimately just a good guy. So uh, we, we love you, Pope. That's all. So anyway, throw that out there. Doc, t- tell them about that book you got over there. Um, the book that you want uh, to reference is a, is a book by Dick Bourne, who does several, several books uh, on important championship titles. And uh, Noni, I don't know if you can see this. It's called 10 pounds of gold and it's off. Uh, it's uh, authored by Dick Bourne along with Dave Milliken. Um, you can find this on Amazon. It's only 13 or 14 bucks. It's not uh, that heavy an expense, but this is, this is a great champ. Uh, you know, look at the championship and it covers like, just for instance, it talks about some of the different variations and how they've moved the flags around. They point out that at one point, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Canadian flag that was represented was the old Canadian flag, not the current one that's now on the belt. So that, that, you know, variation took place. That's one of the more notable ones, but uh, this is an excellent book. It's uh, full of pictures and, you know, up close images and a lot of history of the men who've worn this particular trophy. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. There's um, newspaper clippings, lots of stuff in there. Uh, but it's just called 10 pounds of gold. Let me try to get it, the reflection off of this 10 pounds of gold revised and expanded second edition. There might be a third edition. I'm not sure, but uh, this is by Dick Bourne and that's spelled B O U R N E along with uh, the great Dave Milliken, who is uh, one of the uh, great belt creators in the world today. Um, you know, Reggie Parks just passed away. And so uh, I think that Dave Milliken probably assumes much of that legacy, uh, but uh, fantastic uh, book there. And that's something you want to get your hands on. So, yeah, I'm happy to say, I actually, like when I, when I started the NWA podcast way, way back in the day, that was like one of the first books I bought was uh, the 10 pounds of gold. Cause I just wanted to, cause that was the first thing the NWA really built up was that title and what that title meant. And uh, the, uh, I wanted to know all I could about the the legacy of that, but anyway uh so some of the folks in the chat already had that book uh craig said he l- read it during lockdown a few months ago and uh turbo's got he's got, it. A, he's got other <laughs> he's got other books he's got one on the crown uh championship and the big gold which were really uh the first three nwa titles remember when when luthes uh became world champion after orville brown's tragic car accident that belt that Luthez owned was not an NWA title. It was Luthez's personal belt, what we call the um, what do we call that? We call it the Diamond Belt, the Luthez Diamond Belt. When he retired after losing to Dick Hutton, he actually took that belt with him into retirement. And so Dick Hutton never held a championships title. Uh, the first man to hold an officially NWA sanctioned world sh- title belt was uh, Pat O'Connor, and that was like 180 something days into his reign when he defeated Dick Hutton. Um, and so, uh, and that was the crown belt. And then of course, uh, uh, the 10 pounds of gold came sometime later and then followed by the big gold and then, and then, uh, back to the 10 pounds of gold. So, uh, really, really interesting. We were belt guys. We all love them. And Dick Bourne has got a series of, uh, books on the 10 pounds of gold, big gold, the crown belt. And I think he does one on maybe the U S championship and that, that belt is now, uh, at least the model of that belt is now the national championship, the one that the, that Chris Adonis carries and defends. Um, so you can pick up a lot of interesting and, and informative stuff and scholarship about those championship trophies that are so unique and characteristic of the NWA. Sorry, can't I muted myself. You. I was yeah. looking at something. Uh, I was just, uh, I was, I was looking up, uh, 
on Amazon so I can buy more copies for myself of the Ten Pounds of Gold book. Uh, let's see. Um, Noni, Noni buys it. I can't argue with the change of the flag for all this. It's a beautiful and fitting way to honor his efforts. Quite touching, actually. So, uh, and uh, Craig asks, wants to know, have you guys got the National Wrestling Alliance, the untold story of the Monopoly that strangled pro wrestling book by Tim Hornbaker? Oh, yeah. We're we're big Hornbaker fans over here. Yeah. Hornbaker uh, is a supporter of the Bearded Trio, and we uh, speak with him from time to time, and he is the he is the Walter Cronkite of uh, NWA uh, scholarship. And and he, along with guys like Brian Solomon, and uh, and uh, Dick Bourne, and 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 of course, uh, you know, people who are practitioners of of the sport, like Dave Milliken and all that. They're they're respected people that we always defer to um, uh, when it comes to questions of the history and and the the more finer points points of the uh, of the narration of the of the one true sport. Yeah, we got to get back to it. But if you if you go subscribe over uh, at. Uh, our, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash this is pro wrestling. Or uh, if you look up this is pro wrestling on uh, your uh, whatever podcast uh, device you use or software you use, um, we were doing a history of pro wrestling. And uh, a lot of Hornbaker stuff was uh, was the the um, resources we were going to. Uh, Solomon and, and Hornbaker, like uh, that, that, those were the two we used. That uh, when we were getting into the NWA, you can guarantee you that was going to be uh, ex- exactly the sources we went to. There was a time. Uh, there was a time when uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, the 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 most important pro wrestling periodical, at least popular periodical out there, did not recognize the NWA uh, World's Heavyweight Championship as a world title. And that all changed, uh, you know, what about a year ago, guys? Has it been that long now? Yeah. When uh, uh, and Brian Solomon references a, a, a discussion that the boys from the TIPW show uh, had with him, and he, him taking that feedback back to PWI, and that being instrumental in the recognition of our championship as a world championship. So uh, uh, we appreciate Brian Solomon and all that he's done to support us and to support the great, the greatest pro wrestling entity of all time. Uh, uh so, that that book that, that that Doc's talking about, the Brian Solomon, uh, he he wrote a book called Pro Wrestling FAQ. I don't know if we like said it straight out, but uh, Pro Wrestling FAQ is another good one, uh, Craig. If you if you don't have that one or whoever, if you if you haven't read Pro Wrestling FAQ, it's it's a lot of fun. It's just uh just a straightforward like literal detailed detailed history of pro wrestling but really well written like it's it's a lot of fun to go through i think we always reference that book and uh i think a fun one myself is the comic book history of professional wrestling too if you guys haven't read that one it's just like a fun if you like graphic novels and that sort of thing it's actually a really well done uh piece of information too to like show you uh where how we how we got to where we are today in pro wrestling Mm mm-hmm and I guess on that note, we can wrap this thing up. I mean, we've been talking a while, and uh, the, the NWA is good to us. The National Wrestling Alliance, William Patrick Corgan, uh, Pat Kitty, Billy Trask, uh, or as Doc would call them, uh, Conspiracy Corgan, Irish Pat Kitty, and uh, Billy the Kid Trask. Uh, despite what he says, they're, they're always good to us about uh, letting us talk and talk to you guys and, and hang out. So uh, uh, we do we do legitimately appreciate every single one of you. Thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, we've had a good crowd tonight. Uh, the chat lit up there. And uh, this is this has been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, the Love Alive charity, it looks like, actually just, just posted that uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, it is uh, 6 p.m. on January the 8th, 2022. Uh, that's on a Saturday. The Duval Brawl 4. We'll get the poster and stuff ready for you guys next time. But uh, Trevor Murdoch will be defending the world's heavyweight championship against Gangrel. Uh, that was officially posted. So uh, so that is out there. So assuming nothing changes, Trevor Murdoch is the world's heavyweight championship. Gangrel is getting a shot. And uh, that is a that is an awesome name to see coming for the NWA world's heavyweight championship. So I'm sure... Uh, I know a lot of people are excited about that one. We we got kind of some of the information as that one was being close to signed. And uh, P- 
people were pumped to see Gay Grill potentially becoming uh, a, a world's champion and then to see him go after Trevor Murdoch. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And that's going to be for the Love of Life charity. That's Pope's charity. Uh, Pope that, you know, despite, uh, you know, Pippin ain't easy, but Pope's also big time into his charity is helping the community uh, around Jacksonville. And uh, go, go ahead, Doc. I was gonna say, my prediction is that on next week's episode of Power, we're going to see Trevor Murdoch attacked from behind by Gangrel. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> no. Gangrel's going to come out of nowhere. Yeah. Gangrel, the sinister minister, are going to attack <laughs> from behind. And, uh, we're, we're joking around, but that really feels like a thing that could happen. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, Trevor. <laughs> Jedi wants to know when the T. Uh, when is this is pro wrestling coming back? Uh, that's a good question. That we said October, happen, right? <laughs> so yeah, I think we, October I think we twenty. Some, yeah, stay tuned. October twenty twenty one. We're gonna just pass. relaunch. <laughs> oh, we're man. gonna get there. We love you guys. Yeah, we're, we're, we we're not, that is we're we, we spent a lot of time this week talking about that. We want to bring that back, and uh, it's it's we're getting our footing now. We uh, you know. Uh, uh, we're making our way around the NWA, getting more responsibility. And, and with that comes some, some tools and some resources that they're trusting us with. And I think that the, the more streamlined and, and sleek we become about this and the more, uh, the better handling we have of it, the, that frees us up to be able to devote some time on Sunday nights to come and, and just talk about pro wrestling like we used to. I mean, like we still do. It's not like we don't talk about wrestling tonight, you know, but uh, yeah, we're getting back to it. Trust us. We'll be there. Well, Devin Dowling, I see you in the chat. Haven't watched NWA yet. Just had to commentate for a high school basketball game. What should I watch for? What you should watch for is probably Fight TV. You just jumped in, right? We just finished wrapping up Season 7, Episode 1. So you're right at the beginning. Perfect jumping on point for the National Wrestling Alliance. You want to get into NWA Power? You get your Fight TV subscription. Go in there. It's $4.99 a month. That's super cheap. I mean, it's less, it's like a cup of coffee for each episode. You go in there. And you watch that NWA USA is coming back in January. So you're going to be ready for that. When that comes back, that's going to be free on YouTube Saturdays at noon. And uh, you'll get all the NWA you can handle. So, uh, Devin, if you want to check that out, jump jump on in. The water is fine. This is, this is the best time to do it. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. We love you. The hashtag NWA fam is the best wrestling community. We stand by that. We fight for all of you on that one. And uh, we appreciate you being here. Make sure you're watching NWA Power. We're here every Tuesday night right after it. Please join us again next Tuesday. This has been an awesome crowd, so it's made it a lot of fun. We appreciate every single one of you. And uh, But until next Tuesday night, you guys go and, and relax and enjoy your 